Hey, I'm Charlie Thompson, and I wanted to go over some of the thoughts on lab, like why do we have lab class? How is it structured? Things that will help you understand the lab more, things that will help you get more out of lab, things that will help you plan better, study better, or how to lab. So what's the point of lab class? Well, the point of lab class mainly is to reinforce the ideas presented in lecture by providing practical examples. So all the topics that we're covering in lab should map onto the topics that we're covering in lecture. So that's that's really the point is to give you practical hands-on uh, problems, a chance to apply your skills practically as opposed to the more intellectual based learning from the lecture class. The other part is to help you learn problem solving skills. And that's a very important part of lab. So I came across this slide as part of trying to be a better teacher. And it really, I, I thought, wow, holy mackerel, what are we testing? What, what, what exactly are we testing students on? So examples of the different things that we can test you on. Factual knowledge. So simple facts like the DAR is 10 Celsius degrees of cooling for every kilometer a parcel gets lifted or 10 Celsius degrees of heating for every kilometer a parcel sinks. So facts. Something else that we can assess is application. So an application would be, do you know when to switch from the dry rate to the moist rate? So you have to know the facts already, but then you have to apply you have to apply your understanding of what the MAR and the DAR are all about. Some of the other, other topics, uh, there's conceptual understanding. Do you understand a concept? That could be something as simple as when looking at a topographic map uh, that the contour lines make A's that point upstream. Problem solving skills. So this is the one that got me and I realized, oh, I should probably probably put something together and explain what I'm thinking. So problem solving skills, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's difficult to teach, but I'm expecting you to be able to solve problems. So yeah, I'll, I'll go through a little bit more. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Structure for the week. This will help you. So every week, I try to make it exactly the same. There's a pre-quiz and a discussion post due Wednesday night. That's followed up with an activity and a discussion post due Sunday night. So you've got like four things that are due every week. Two of them are due on Wednesday. Two of them are due on Sunday. Every Sunday, you've got two things that are due. And every Sunday, new lab material should open up on Canvas. So your week, pretty much, you can plan. Every week, you got two things due Wednesday night. You got two things due Sunday night. Two things due Wednesday night. Two things due Sunday night. So how to work through each lab. Each module starts with the learning objectives, and I tell you specifically what skills you're supposed to have learned by the time you're done with the lab. The second page is the information page, and when I'm writing the lab, I know that not everyone is in my lecture class. Some of you maybe haven't had lecture class in five years. So in the information page, I try to put all the information about that topic that you will need to do the lab. The information has all the factual information that you need to complete the lab. It's up to you to apply that information, but all the factual information should be there. I would recommend that you read all the text. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I wrote this stuff. And I wrote, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to write things that you don't need unless they're super interesting. And I think that's, that's valid. But if I put text in there, it's because you need it. I, I'm not adding any filler. There's no length requirements for any of this stuff on my part. I don't have to really, I could just give you the lab. That'd be awful, but I could. I would expect everyone to most everyone to do really poorly. So I've written these information sheets that give you all the factual information, explosive volcanoes, effusive volcanoes, links to other videos, links to other web pages as needed. So really, I would read all the text. If you're not going to read all the text, at least skim all the text, at least read through it. So uh, when this says, how are the labs? What I really mean is, how is each module? So really, I should go back and fix this and say, how are the modules structured? So there's a pre-lab quiz. The, 
pre-lab quiz is my the idea, my idea for the pre-lab quiz, and it's not always doesn't always work, but the pre-lab quiz is testing you on the vocabulary. So if there's key words that are new and different that you need to know to do the quiz, I'm going to test you on it. If there's a big concept, I'm going to test you on it in the pre-lab quiz. The pre-lab quiz is set up so you can take it twice. The correct answers are shown after the second try. I try to write wrong answer feedback that'll give you information about why the answer you picked, if it's not right, why it wasn't the correct answer. I won't tell you what the right answer is, but hopefully I'll give you enough information for you to understand why that question was wrong. There are multiple choice type questions. Uh, I'm actually trying to use the pre-lab quiz. It's, it's more teaching than a quiz. So by giving you multiple choice questions, I'm trying to pick like the right answer and then obvious wrong answers that you could make based on typical common errors that you could make. So I'm really trying to funnel you into a, a handful of options that'll help you understand either what the right answer is. Well, yeah, no matter what, the point of that is to help you understand what the right answer is. And like I said, I'm, I'm trying to write for each question as much as possible wrong answer feedback that tells you why that why that wasn't the right answer, what, what the error might have been in your thinking or math or whatever it is for that question. There is a lab activity. The lab activity is where you have space to apply your knowledge. It's set up so you can take it twice. The correct answers are shown after the second try. They're open. I try to give more open answers. So some of you had commented, well, yeah, the pre-lab quiz was really easy, but the activity was really hard. Well, part of that is the difference in what I'm actually trying to do. With the pre-lab, I'm trying to make sure that by the time you're out of it the second time, you've got all the questions right, you know exactly what to do. Often I'll include step-by-step -step examples in the pre-quiz. The lab activity is more about problem solving application of understanding. And so it's going to be considerably more difficult because it's not just like the DAR is 10. It's going to be, do you know when to switch from the DAR to the MAR? It's judgment related questions that will require more thought on your part. The lab activity questions require critical thinking and evaluation. That's part of the lab activity. That's why they're not really appropriate for multiple choice questions. Yeah, I try to make the pre-quiz short, uh, but then there's a the question, how long should they be? I'll bet, yeah, this is, this is up there among the things that I'll bet you've never thought about. Like when I'm writing these tests, when I'm writing, well, not the tests, when I'm writing the, the labs, the lab exercises, I want them to be long enough to give you two tries at each new skill. If I, I think if I just give you one opportunity to try doing whatever it is that you're doing, if you get it wrong, if you get it right, that doesn't tell you as much maybe as if I give you two chances to demonstrate your, uh, your skill at whatever that is. I, I, yeah, I, I don't try to make them too long. I try to make them just long enough to give you the opportunity to demonstrate that you understand the concepts and can do it. So the lab questions themselves, and I think I'm getting better over the years at writing questions. Each question should be a question. Ask yourself, what's the question asking me to do? What, am I supposed to calculate something? Am I supposed to draw something? Am I supposed to find something? What, what is the question asking me to do? So lab classes up until halfway through last semester, I only taught in person. I've only taught in person my entire career. I've had multiple opportunities. The, our department has begged us, hey, get a, get a physical geography lecture class online. And I've always said, no, I like teaching in person because then you can see in students' eyes if they got it or if they didn't get it. I like the contact with students in the classroom. That's why part, that's a big part of why I became a teacher. So since we're all online and since it's asynchronous, you don't have the opportunity. We, we're not going to have conversations in class like that happened in the past. So if you don't understand something, please ask me. I've got Zoom hours. I've got six hours of Zoom hours. I'm required to have five. I, I don't know why I actually have six. Very few people attend. Usually it's the same people. 
and usually they're doing pretty well. So really, I, I beg, I would ask that you consider showing up to Zoom. If you're uncomfortable with Zoom, you can leave your, your camera off. I don't care. Uh, usually the point of Zoom is that I can demonstrate things like use the whiteboard, do problems. We could look at pictures. I could give you examples. Uh, you can text me. You can email me if you don't understand anything. Uh, the Zoom hours, if you can't make the scheduled Zoom hours, I think I've made it clear. I'm more than happy to meet you just about any time of the day or night, as long as I'm planning on being awake. So reach out to me, ask questions about anything, just a, a, anything. I don't, I don't get this question. What is this question asking me? Can you reword this question so that I know what it's asking? I would love to do that. Uh, the people that have shown up in Zoom, usually like five, 10 minutes of just talking about the problems results in them understanding it and being able to, to do the lab. So uh, really quickly, I wanted to give go through and look at lab 14 as an example of this. So here's the start here page. I'm going to full screen this. So this is a really rad map. This is part of the Fisk investigation of the ancient courses of the Mississippi meander belt. So all of these are abandoned channels where the Mississippi used to flow through, except the white one on top. And then they're color coded by age. So here, after completion of this lab, you should be able to, here's the student learning objectives. It tells you this lab has a pre-lab quiz, a discussion topic, and a lab activity. Here's a link to the pre-lab video playlist. Uh, in this case, I made a Google Earth project that loads with just a link. I'm totally stoked on that. Here's a link to the lecture slides. Those will be up as soon as I'm done recording this, this video for you. So there's the first page, just kind of, oh, I guess this is about rivers. Next up, the information page. So keywords, I try to make bold. There's a glossary. That's a PDF that there's a link to that has all of the keywords, all of the new terms for the in, for all of the labs. So there's diagrams, there's explanation. Oh, what what's it? So let's see if looking at rivers information, I can figure out what this is about. Well, here's a subject, drainage patterns and floodplains. So I'm guessing some of the lab is going to be about drainage patterns and some of the labs going to be about floodplains. So here's pictures of different drainage patterns. I'm telling you right here what the names are and what the what forms them? So like what geographic situation makes parallel drainage or rectangular or radial or deranged or trellis or dendritic? So here's information about the figure. Floodplains, more key terms, folded landscapes, information about antecedent superposed streams, more diagrams. So this is the information page. Next up, discussion question. I'm gonna keep moving. Here's the quiz. Ba, 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 ba. We can do it twice. Key terms, obvious stuff. And then there is the lab, the lab activity. And in this one, I put this video, I put the video in the playlist, but I'm not sure everybody watches all the videos in the playlist, although I, I really recommend it. So here are the the, uh, the maps for the lab. I made them a PDF this time so that you can download it and keep it open. There's a video on why rivers curve. And then there's the uh, quiz it's, or the lab activity itself. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, email me, call me, text, Zoom, whatever works for you.